you've now learned several new tricks and strategies for how to take your research to the next level. In this last section, we're going to take a look at how to use APA style. And normally when people think about APA style, they're thinking about just how to do the references, but actually it includes a bit more than that. So I would say that there's three main things to be aware of when you're approaching uh, APA. The first one is that it's going to help you learn how to format your paper. This includes things like what font and size of text you should use, how to do your title page, how to do page numbers, all of those details. The second thing that APA will do is it will teach you actually what writing style to use when talking about the research that you've done, and then how to do the in-text citations, which are in the brackets. And the third section of APA teaches you how to do the reference list, so how to put together references of your own, similar to the ones that you were just exploring in the citation li linking section. We're not going to go into super fine detail on each of these three categories, but what we are going to do is learn how to use a guide so that you can always come back to it whenever you need to actually produce any paper in APA, and then how to get additional help from there. There are lots of different guides that you can use to help you learn how to do APA style. I'm going to do a Google search right now for the one that I like best, and it's called APA OWL. APA OWL is um, the online writing lab, so OWL is online writing lab, and it's from Purdue University. So this is just one of many different guides to using APA that exist out there. This one is my favorite, um, and I will definitely be showing you why. So I'm going to talk first about how to do the reference list, um, even though I just described them as one, two, three, you know, formatting, in-text citations, and three as reference list. We're going to work backwards, so we'll look at the reference list options first. So this website includes information about how to do every kind of reference you could possibly want to do. What you need to do is you need to go to the left-hand side and look at this section that says reference list. So you might want to start with the one that says reference list basic rules. Um, but because most of the sources you're using in your paper are going to be journal articles, you're going to go to the left hand side here and you're going to click reference list articles in periodicals. And um, this is going to give you lots of information about how to do your reference list. And we're going to take a closer look at that right now. Once you're in the APA Online Writing Lab website, what you want to do is you want to go to the left menu and you want to find this section that says Reference List Articles in Periodicals. So this section is what tells you how to do the reference list in APA style for um, articles. What periodicals means, that's a word that refers to any kind of publication that happens multiple times. So like a newspaper is a periodical, a magazine is a periodical, things that come out periodically, including, as we know, academic journals. So once you go there, you're going to come to this section that tells you the exact format that you need to follow when you enter papers into your reference list. And what you want to do is basically follow that exactly, including the capitalization, the italics, and the punctuation. So what I'm going to do, I took one of the, one of the uh, references that we looked at last time, and here are all the pieces, and I'm going to try to put it together. Okay, so the first thing that this is telling me is that we need to put the authors in. So I'm going to start with that. All right, so I've got the authors there. And then the next part is year. All right, so where's my year piece? Here it is, so 2010. Oh, and I just noticed that there's a period before that as well. So I have to put the period there too. Okay. So then we've got the title of article comes next. So this is the name of the actual paper itself. Here it is. Video game structural characteristics, a new psychological taxonomy. The next piece is the title of the periodical. So this means the journal title. And as we talked about before, this is the part that's always in italics. So here it is. So that comes next, International Journal of Mental Health and Addiction. Um, what kind of punctuation comes after that? A 
a comma. Okay, so I've got some of those, so I'll use a comma there. And then the volume number and issue number if we have it. So in this case, um, I only have a volume because last time we said that they had omitted the issue, which is okay. Um, and you can kind of not really tell that well, but this is actually italicized as well. And as you can see in the example, it has to be. So we're gonna put that there. Uh, we don't have an issue number, so that's fine. And it looks like they have another comma after that. And then the pages, or the page numbers. So usually it's a range. Um, so in this case, it's page 90 to page 106. And um, then it's the DOI, the digital object identifier comes last. So take a look at this for a second and just think to yourself, is there anything here that needs to get fixed still? Did I do it right? There's a couple of things that I can see already that aren't, aren't quite right, even though I mostly followed the, the example. So the very first thing is that in this case, I have written out the author's names but as you can see in the example, they want you to use the initials. They've, so when they say author, comma, AA, they mean the last name, and then the comma, and then their initials. So in this example, they're not telling you to write out their whole name. So in fact, what I need to do is change this one for the more accurate one. You'll also notice there's a difference here. In this one, I wrote out the word and, but it's actually supposed to be this symbol, which is an ampersand. So we're gonna take away this. And we're gonna put the correct format of author's name in there. And okay, so now I have my period, uh, but I don't need it because now there's already one there, so I can take that one away. Year in brackets, 2010, was accurate. Now the title of the article, um, let's see, is there anything different about that and the example? The key thing that's different is that in this, all my letters are capitalized. Notice how every single word starts with a capital. But in the example, only the first word has a capital letter and then the other ones are lowercase. So actually, this one is more accurate. Okay, so here we've got authors, we've got the year, and then the title. So it's all lowercase except for the first word. And then another thing is whenever you have a colon like this, then the first word after the colon gets a capital as well. They didn't include that in their example, but that's how it works. Um, okay, so it ends with a period, perfect. I've got a period there. Then a uh, title of the periodical. In this case, you can see they do capitalize every word. And so this is accurate, it's fine. However, something I didn't do initially was I forgot to indent the second line. So you can see how the first one is like normal, and then the other ones are indented. So I would need to move this over. And when I do this on the computer, it would be, I would use a hanging indent to do that. And I think the rest of this might be right. So I've got the comma, volume number. Um, we don't have an issue, that's okay. The comma again, and the page numbers. And it looks like there's supposed to be a period there, which I forgot to include. So we're gonna put it there. And then finally, the DOI. And you can see that in the example, it does not end in a period. So we just leave it blank. We don't put anything at the end of it. So that's how you would go about constructing a reference list entry for a paper that you found. You would go to the APA Online Writing Lab website or another website that has examples of how to do them, and you would follow it pretty much exactly piecing together all the little bits of information from the article that you found. So what we're gonna do now is um, go on to back onto the computer and I'll show you how to take this from your reference list and turn it into an in-text citation when you're actually writing the paper, the actual body of the essay itself.